Hey guys, happy Thursday. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing an empties video for you. I'm still waiting on a few Sephora orders to do a part two haul and also the retro glam palette from Natasha Denona, which I wanna get a review up. So we have an empties video for you today. I have a bunch of stuff here. My bin is overflowing at this point. I wanna start off with the new products that I've tried first and then I will go on to my tried and true that you usually see in an empties video. Starting off with makeup, I have two mascaras that I went through. The first is the Rare Beauty Mascara, one of my favorite mascaras. Only recently did I try the Tower 28 one and that kind of replaced it right now. I still love this and have a backup of it and will continue to repurchase and use it because it's definitely a top mascara for me. It gives volume and length, mainly volume for this and it wears beautifully. So that is why I love it. The brush is one of the standard types that I really like. Natural Bristle has this hourglass shape to it, so it really cups the lashes nicely. I just personally find the Tower 28 one a little bit better at separation, so that's why I've been reaching for that more. And then over the summer, I always repurchase this mascara. It is from Essence, it's super affordable. It is the Lash Princess Mascara, and I always get the waterproof one for the summer. This is the only waterproof mascara that ever touches my lashes because I find when I go to remove it, it's still not too hard to remove. It's on, but not as hard as some other waterproof mascaras. The brush is a natural bristle as well. It just has a different shape to it. This one specifically is nice because it can get at the inner corner lashes quite nicely. It also works really well on lower lashes because it's not too big like the Rare Beauty one that I showed you. So really nice if you're looking for a waterproof option. The regular one is just as good, but I just always purchase this during the summer. I was talking about in my Sephora haul how I needed a new Charlotte Tilbury powder and this is why, because I was scraping along the edges to use this up. So I used the shade medium too. I can't even count how many times I've gone through these powders before. It's an essential in my makeup routine. I'm currently wearing it underneath my eyes today and I just feel like it gives the perfect amount of coverage, smoothness, brightness for number two and just makes everything soft and airbrushed. Perfect name for it is airbrush because I truly think it does make my skin nice and airbrushed, specifically my under eyes. It's a little light for all over my face. I do have tan, but I don't like that shade as much as medium for whatever reason. I just always reach for medium. And then I actually used to really, really like this product. It's from Glamnetic. It is their magnetic eyeliner to attach their magnetic lashes. I purchased this one and I didn't get too many uses out of it because it dried up really, really quick. These aren't cheap, <laughs> okay? So I don't really wanna purchase this again. It gave me a really bad experience just because these are so pricey and for it to dry up as quick as it did makes me a little bitter. So I just use liquid magnetic liner now because that doesn't dry up as fast. I feel like the magnetic in these pens, which I do like for regular liner, just dries up in this sort of format. So no thank you, I'm going to pass on it. I love the color, it was the brown one and I did love it the first time I tried it, but this one, just no. For the price, absolutely not. <laughs> then I have another liner and I feel like this dried up pretty quickly too. It's from Benefit and I liked it when I was using it. It's their, their real extreme precision liner. It is nice and precise, but again, I either was using it too much, which I don't think I was. <laughs> I was reaching for brown eyeliner only for a period of time. However, I don't feel like it should have dried up as fast as it did as well. I did like it when I used it. Again, it's the drawing up factor for me. And then I used up one brow pencil. I'm surprised it's only one. There must be a bunch that are just about to go for me. So this is from Huda Beauty and it is their micro shade brow pencil in rich brown. I love the color on this and I would 100% repurchase this again. But the only thing I didn't like about this was that it broke off really easily. So I found I wasted product because it is so tiny, you have to be delicate, but with that being said, it still would break off when I didn't even have it rolled up that much. It was just super, super delicate. And for the price of this, I just don't wanna go through product that fast. So I heard that the Give Beauty one from Gwen Stefani is nice and thin like this one, but it doesn't break as easily. A subscriber told me that. I actually picked one up during the Sephora sale. So you're gonna see that in my second haul but I'm hoping that it's better than this. Otherwise I would repurchase this again, even though it does break off, but I'm trying to find another option that's just as thin, but I love the color of Rich Brown, especially for my hair color right now. And then I have a fragrance that I used up in a travel size. It is from Killian, it's the Love Don't Be Shy. 
And I have a dupe for this that I'm currently going through, but I would absolutely love to purchase the full size of this at one point. It is fairly pricey. So I'm kind of holding off just because I do have that dupe. I'll link my dupe down below in case you haven't checked it out. But it's a company named Okcha and they do sprays. Also Oil Perfumery does a dupe if you like a rollerball version more. However, I do like a spray, so I like Okcha. It smells identical to this. So that's what I'm currently using. Super, super sweet fragrance if you've never tried it before. It's the sweetest fragrance that I personally have. I can see the hype why so many people love it. I don't use up even travel sizes that often and I use that up. Moving on to some sunscreen. I'm gonna start off with the ones that I'm not going to be repurchasing and then I'm gonna finish off with the one that's my absolute favorite. So I have this one from First Aid Beauty and they don't currently make this anymore. There was an issue <laughs> with the formulation of this. So this is the Weightless Liquid Mineral SPF 30. This did have a slight tint to it. I like that it was a mineral sunscreen. However, when you applied this to your face, the formula was super gritty. So you felt like you were almost exfoliating your face when you're putting this on, which I do not like because I have sensitive skin. I don't wanna be exfoliating my face every single day. <laughs> That's very irritating for my skin. So I stopped using it once the formula kind of got really gritty. It didn't take long to do, so I'm not sure. I was reading when this was on Sephora reviews and other people had that issue as well. However, some people didn't. I don't know if it was a batch issue with that, but regardless, I stopped using it. And then I finished this up. I wouldn't repurchase it though because I did feel like it could be slightly pore clogging. This is from Supergoop. It's their unseen sunscreen. It has an SPF of 40. It's water resistant for 40 minutes. I also have the glow screen, which I'm currently using up, but I have another that is just way better than all these. This was nice because it almost acted like a primer because it filled in my pores. So that's why I liked it. It had almost a silicone feel if you don't care for that. So it has that slip to it. It is a clear sunscreen. So if you want something with zero cast, this was great for that reason. But I've just found others that I like more and I feel like that one was kind of breaking me out, clogging my pores. This happens with 99% of sunscreens. <laughs> they eventually start clogging my pores. One of the only ones that I've not had issue with pore clogging and breakouts is this one from Elta MD. And it is their UV Clear Broad Spectrum SPF 46. And this is the tinted version. They do have another one of this that isn't tinted. I like this one because I don't think I have even enough to show you. I desperately tried to get any remaining product out. That was the last little bit. So you can see it has a light tint to it. It goes on basically clear. Blends into the skin really nicely. It does have that slight tint to it. I don't find it does too much for my skin personally, the tint. But what I like about this the most is how thin it is, how it looks like underneath makeup, and the fact that it does not break me out. So this is the best sunscreen that I've ever tried. It is pricey though, so if you're in Canada and know where I can pick this up, the best price, please tell me below because I do wanna pick this up, but the place I was seeing was like $69, and I feel like I didn't spend that much on it. Maybe it's around 30, 35 in the US, I'm not sure. But let me know where you get this so I don't have to pay <laughs> so much for it. I know it's pricey, but I don't think it should be that much. <laughs> a great, great sunscreen though. Continuing on with skincare, you know that I love Glow Recipe and I'm actually almost close with a couple other products. <laughs> I really needed to stock up on everything. And the first thing I have here is the Glow Recipe Papaya Sorbet Enzyme Cleansing Balm. I've talked about this at length on my channel. It is the best cleansing balm that I've ever used because it's effective at removing your makeup, but it also softens the skin. So really great, has an amazing smell to it. I still wanna just keep the packaging just to smell this <laughs> on occasion, but I've already repurchased this and I'm just using up another cleansing balm before I open up the one that I got from the Sephora sale. So 100% recommend, I always have that on hand. This morning I actually just used this up. It's the Avocado Melt Retinol Eye Sleeping Mask. Really like this for underneath the eyes because I feel like it's really nice and hydrating. I usually can't use retinol all over my face, but underneath my eyes, it works perfectly fine. I don't get any sort of milia or clogging underneath there. And I just really like the consistency of it. It was my nighttime eye cream. I use one different for daytime. I do wanna try something else though. It didn't blow me away, but I did really like it. 
So in the future, I would purchase it, but I have other ones from companies that send me some PR that I just wanna try out before I move on and purchase that again. Again, I don't know how many times I've repurchased this. I couldn't even wait for the sale when this ran out. So this is the Glow Recipe Avocado Ceramide Recovery Serum. It's great for your skin barrier, redness, sensitive skin, everything that I have an issue with. This doesn't mention anything about texture, but I feel like this really does keep my texture in check. But I guess that makes sense if my skin barrier is being taken care of from this that I'm not gonna have sort of texture issues that I typically have when my skin barrier is a wreck. So I always have this on hand. I only use it at night again. It's a really great serum to add to your routine if you have sensitive skin like me or want something for your barrier. Then I also used up the Glow Recipe Plum Plump Hyaluronic Serum. I already repurchased this. I really like it. Super simple hyaluronic acid. I don't personally think you need to get this specific one to get a good hyaluronic acid. I'm just a huge fan of Glow Recipe, so I just like to get it to complete the collection, but I don't think you necessarily need that product from Glow Recipe. It doesn't stand out as being anything special. And then the last thing I have here, which I would not repurchase from Glow Recipe, is their Plum Plump Hyaluronic Cream. This was a decent moisturizer, but it didn't blow me away. I don't think my skin was any better having used this. It wasn't anything special. The texture was nice and thin, but I feel like I needed something a little bit more than this. So that for me, I used up during the summer because I felt like that was a perfect time for that kind of consistency. Right now I need something a little bit heavier. So I'm not gonna be repurchasing that anytime soon or ever again, probably because it just didn't blow me away. And then I have another cleansing balm, which I always have on hand because this one is great for the shower. It's not a tub and it's a really affordable price. So this is from the Inky List. It's their oat cleansing balm. I've gone through multiples of this as well. And this one, leaves a film on my face. I double cleanse, so it doesn't really matter. The Glow Recipe one washes completely clean. This one, I can feel something on my face when I use it, but it does a great job if you do have sensitive skin to really lock onto your makeup and just take it off. But it does leave that layer, which feels hydrating, but I like to wash everything off after. This one I do use in the shower because it can be a little bit messy. I like that's in a squeezy tube so that I'm not opening up a potted thing in the shower. So this works perfectly for those sort of cases for me. But I do recommend it. I just feel like it's a little bit heavier. Now I have some self tanner to show you guys. None of these I'm wearing today though. <laughs> I have the filter by Molly May in extra dark. I repurchased this. I get two of them during Boxing Day sale. She always does a buy one, get one, I think, or they're 50% off. I can't remember. It's always a good deal that she does for Boxing Day. So I'm going to be repurchasing that then. This was my final one, so I almost made it to the end of the year. Maybe I need to pick up a few more next time. I usually always have this on hand, but I'm just gonna wait for the sale because I know it's coming up and I have other self tanner that I love as well. That's just a favorite that's always in my rotation. The most affordable self tan that I love and it's specifically good for the winter. This is the only one I trust <laughs> for the winter that I know is not going to dry out my skin and you can get this at the drugstore. It's the Jergens Natural Glow Instant Sun. I always get the Ultra Deep Bronze. I talked to Steph about this. I think they only have deep bronze in the US. We have Ultra Deep Bronze that we can get here and also the Deep Bronze. I like to always get the darkest for me. It just flatters me the most. Since I do naturally tan quite deep, it just always matches my skin tone a little bit better. This one is nice. It has the 60 second dry down. It doesn't smell like a traditional tanner. And this one is the one that's the most hydrating of any mousse that I've personally used. I don't get that scaly crocodile looking skin. <laughs> If you self tan, you know what I'm talking about, but this one doesn't do that for me and it lasts really nicely on my skin. Not as dark as some of the other ones I use, but still like a really nice tan. Highly recommend, good price point. Always have that on hand as well. And then this one, I used to self tan my face. I haven't even been using this on my face now, but it is the Saint Tropez Natural Glowing Skin Bronzing Water Face Mist. I bought the full size of it and it went rancid <laughs> before I was able to finish it. So I like picking up these minis when they have them available. So when they do have it available, I'll get a little mini size, just throw it in my Sephora cart. Otherwise, I don't even bother tanning my face if I'm to be honest, but it is a nice option if you want to actually match your body. So that I used up in the summer, winter time, doesn't really matter so much to me, but I do like it. I just don't like how the big size just goes off 
before I can finish using it. Then I recently finished this. This is so old. This is the Belief Body Bomba. And I did like this. I love Belief skincare, especially their moisturizer balm. That is so amazing. This was really great for before I would self tan. So that is what I used this for was just to hydrate my problem areas like my knees, my feet, my elbows before I go in with self tan. So this lasted me a while because I would only use this on those specific areas and I did like it. I wouldn't repurchase it though. A moisturizer is a moisturizer to me. I haven't found any that really blow me away for a body moisturizer, but if you have one that you absolutely love and recommend, let me know in the comment section below. I just honestly hate moisturizing my body. I hate self tanning. <laughs> Why do I do it? I need to be better at moisturizing. Then for hair, I have a mini size of VK18. I bought this during one of the Sephora sales. It is their leave-in molecular repair hair mask. This is fantastic. This is an interesting hair mask because you shampoo your hair, do not use conditioner, and then you put this in your hair, leave it in for four minutes. You don't have to rinse it out or anything, but then you can go in, blow dry, anything you need to do your styling products. And this just leaves your hair super soft and better than having not used this. Like I can tell the days that I don't use this, how my hair is. So this is one of those products that, that does work, but I only feel my hair looks good when I do use it. So the days that I don't decide to use this, I don't feel my hair looks as good. So I wish the effect of this would last even when I don't have to use it for one of my shampoo days. I do love it though and I have a full size of this and I will always have it on hand because it works that well for my hair. I just wish it had more of a long-term use for it than just that immediate makes your hair look good, you know? I hope that makes sense. Then I have two hair masks from Briogeo, which I always like to have on hand as well. This is the Don't Despair Repair Honey Moisture Deep Conditioning Mask. Any of the Don't Despair Repair is amazing. I have a different version of this, not the bear, that I currently have Briogeo sent over. I purchased this myself though, and I absolutely loved it. They have an apple one now. I wish they'd bring back the honey bear because I love the scent of it. And then I also have the Be Gentle, Be Kind Avocado and Kiwi Mega Mask. This was really good too. So this I had in a deluxe sample. I didn't have to purchase this, but the Briogeo hair masks in general really, really work for my hair. So highly recommend checking one of those out. I probably start with the Don't Despair Repair line first, but if they have a sample of any of their hair masks, it would be a great time to try and see which one you really like. I like them all. <laughs> then I have two hairsprays here. This one is from KMS, it is my absolute favorite. The only downside of this is how small <laughs> the component is. So this is the KMS Hairstay Anti-Humidity Seal. This is a 24 hour weather proofing for finished looks. It is fantastic if you have frizzy hair flyaways and you truly wanna weatherproof your hair, this is great. So I love to especially use this when I have straight sleek hair. It still works for when I have wavy hair, but I do find it best for even updos. I don't have it in my hair today, but anything sleek, I like it for. It's not heavy in the slightest though. This is a very lightweight hairspray. You can definitely brush through your hair, especially if you curl it. So overall, it's a great hairspray. It is my personal favorite. I just reach for it more when I have straight hair just to tame the top of my hair. And then this one is great when I really wanna hold my curls. So this is from Kerastase. It's their K-Lock Noir Extra Strong Hold. This holds your hair, but it also isn't soft like this one. This one you could brush through your hair and your hair still feels soft and nice. This one's gonna crunch up your hair. <laughs> so I use this sparingly. I use this for updos. Anytime I have my hair curly, I usually have this in because of the extra strong hold. I think it really works for that. But this isn't something that I'd be spraying on my roots or anything like that. This can go everywhere. Roots, the length of my hair. This is strictly for just the length of my hair, not the roots, because otherwise it's just too crunchy. It says it also has anti-humidity in this as well. This is the best one I've ever tried though, for that aspect. If you're looking for anything anti-humidity, the KMS is the way to go. Then I have two body hair removal creams, and I do use these occasionally for specific purposes. This one I loved. It is the Avon Skin So Soft. And this one didn't burn my skin. It truly is gentle. <laughs> so that's why I really liked it. I don't even know if they still make this. It's a moisturizing body hair removal, which is non-irritating. It was fantastic. Loved that. And this one, 
No. <laughs> I ended up purchasing this because I was on Twitter. I saw a ton of people raving about this. So this is from Nair, which I've tried before and been fine with, but this one specifically said it's a sensitive formula and it's a Glide-On. So this is not a deodorant. <laughs> Don't think it is. I didn't use it like a deodorant, but I did follow directions, do the patch test, and I did a little bit underneath my arm. And oh my goodness, the burn that I got. I'm glad I just did one arm first. <laughs> and this says it's for bikini arms and underarms. I'm so glad I didn't patch test on my bikini area. My underarm was bad enough. I don't use hair removal on my arms, but I did purchase this to try for underarms because I thought it'd be really convenient because it's like a deodorant stick. It is definitely not sensitive <laughs> proof for me. This I didn't even leave on the full amount of time because it started burning right away. That was only a one-time use thing. I never returned it or anything. I'm just gonna give it to a friend, see if they want some body hair removal stuff. That's a definite no. These got away for me. I don't buy facial towelettes again, but Burt's Bees sent these over. I really like these though when they do send them over. They're the hydrating facial towelettes with watermelon. So I do use these mostly for swatches. It helps for filming when I'm swatching a ton of stuff, lip swatch videos. I do really like a towelette for that. It's just convenient. I don't like to buy them, but if they're sent to me, I will use them. <laughs> That's my whole mindset around facial towelettes. I don't buy them anymore. I just use micellar water and reusable cotton rounds. If I'm going to do swatches now, I have a ton of nails and this is my last stuff. So for nail glue, I would buy this from Amazon. It's the KDS nail glue. This is great if you have press on nails like me and wanna glue them on. This is the best glue there is. They will last me for weeks. People do not believe me when I tell them I can get my press ons to last over a week to two weeks. I can get it at least seven days before one pops off and I can often get most of my nails up to two weeks before I need to redo them that glue is the best. So I do get it on Amazon and I use it with all these nails here. I don't even know where these were from. I think I used them for a Halloween costume, but most of the time I am using Kiss nails. All the rest are Kiss. I could tell you my favorite styles, which are the frosting, which is just the white set. And then I like the So French ones, which are a really pretty medium length French tip. I like the plain nails, all the bare but better nails, which were really plain, which I have a set on right now. Those are the bare but better. And then I have a ton of the So French and then the frosting ones. So either white French tip or like a really light pink is what I currently wear. They do a ton of different colors. They've really improved their adhesive. So I can do those without glue and I can get them to last me a week before one pops off. And then when one does, I'll reach for the KDS glue and just adhere it that way. So that is kind of how I use press-ons. Huge fan of Kiss, you guys know. I've been using them for years and years. And that is everything for my empties video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Didn't know what to film today because I'm still waiting on everything <laughs> to get to me. Shipping is so slow right now, but that is totally understandable because it always happens every single sale season. So I will have those other two videos up for you as soon as I possibly can. But for now, you get an empties and this needed to be done because I needed to empty that bin. <laughs> so thank you guys so, so much for clicking on this video, for spending some time with me today. If you have not already, I would absolutely love for you to subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button, the bell if you want to be notified of all my future videos, and I will see you guys in my next one.